Good morning, everyone. It's the Bee's Knees. We're talking about the Red River Valley Beekeepers. And the president of the bunch is Kelly today. Or, or every day. You're the president every day. But <laughs> At least since August. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Jillian. So, tell us about the Red River Valley Beekeepers. Um, so the Red River Valley Beekeepers was an organization created to promote pollinators, both native pollinators and honeybees, and the scientific keeping of them and their natural environment. So we exist to promote pollinators of, in all their various forms and pollination, um, because one in every three bites that we take has been pollinated by a bee of some sort or another insect. Really? Yes. That is really interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so great. I know that you brought us here a demonstration hive. Yes, that, so okay. this is a much smaller version of the kind of hives that we usually will work with. Okay. Um, and this is a version called the Langstroth hive, or, um, and that was created over 100 years ago by a gentleman. So there are different configurations of those, but the general idea is you'll have a couple of boxes that are usually bigger on the bottom. Okay. And that's where the bees kind of have their little home. Mm -hmm. And then we add boxes on top of that, and that's where our honey gets filled in with as the bees oh. go and gather nectar and pollen and bring it back to the hive. Okay, very interesting. So is this yes. the honey that you guys have gathered? Yes, so okay. these are a couple of examples of honey that I've gotten from my hives at home. So oh um, this is actually a wheat and sunflower honey. So um, it's already crystallizing and the crystallization can happen for a couple of reasons. Okay. Um, moisture content of the honey is one of them. Um, the specific flowers and the nectar sources they're getting the honey from and then mm. just of course the overall temperature. Okay. Um, so. Just to show the difference, this is an amber honey that I entered in the fair last year. Oh, so there's wow. a huge difference in the color you can yeah. get just from the floral sources. Oh, okay. So it's just from the sources that kind of dictates that. Absolutely. And then if, if you heat your honey in order to like get it um, into the bottles and things like that, okay. that can also change the color and yeah. a little bit of the nutrient composition as well. All right. And you said that yes. you have some hives at home. I do. So do you live out in the country and you have some hives? I do. I okay. live about 35 miles outside okay. of Fargo. And so we have two hives on our home property. And then um, one of our neighbors who farms has invited us to put a couple of hives on his land. So we have oh, some, some hives off site as well. Okay. Very exciting. Yes. All right. So I know that you guys have a new beekeeper training for we anyone do. that wants to be a beekeeper, so tell us about that. Absolutely, so every year we offer a new beekeeper training course, which is based off of the University of Minnesota's Bee Lab training course. Oh, cool. So our, our courses are full for this year. Um, we were amazed how quickly they filled up. Um, but the courses are about three hours long and we go over the basics of how to keep bees safely mm -hmm. and in our climate, keeping them alive through the winter, which is um, a huge challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So how can people support native and honeybee populations? So the biggest thing that you can do is rather than going out necessarily and buying yourself a hive and getting yourself set up mm -hmm. is you can actually plant to support the pollinators, both honeybees and natives. So maybe instead of having a grass lawn where you go out and eradicate all your dandelions, mm -hmm. maybe you leave those dandelions there. Um, maybe you add some clover in with your the rest of your plants so that oh. there's an extra floral source there. Mm -hmm. And that's not only good for the bees, it's also um, a little easier on your wallet because you don't have to do quite so much mowing. Oh, you sure, don't have yeah. to do so much spraying. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's good for you, it's good for the bees, and yeah. then it's also good for the environment. Yeah, I love that. And less effort in the summertime. So. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. So why is it important to support these native and so like I already mentioned, if one in three bites of every food that we're taking is coming from a pollinated crop, so think about the apples and the strawberries that we eat, mm -hmm. a honeybee or another insect had to go and pollinate that. So honeybees aren't the only ones. We have hundreds and probably thousands of native species of bees as well in the state of Minnesota and in North Dakota. And then we also have some of the insects we don't like so much, but are also important. Our flies, our mosquitoes, they mm -hmm. also have a role in pollination. Oh, okay. So whenever we're planting all of those different um, plants, whether they are um, the typical flower gardens that you think about, mm -hmm. a wildflower meadow, or even just incorporating some of those clovers and dandelions into your yard and, and supporting that, you're allowing those species to thrive. Um, we have seen a decline in pollinators, both native and honeybee populations for various reasons, but planting those different crops is a way to help support them and help them to make it through another winter. All right, I love that. So how can someone become a beekeeper if they're interested? If they're interested, definitely reach out to the Red River Valley, Valley Beekeepers Association. We do have um, our classes, and then we also have a monthly meeting. So it's the third Thursday of every, 
Tuesday, excuse me, not Thursday, of every month from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Perfect. And we have um, guest speakers come in and tell us how to keep those bees safe and happy. Yeah, okay, I love that, you guys. Very important, just overall, and, you know, we love honey. So yes. <laughs> we have much more coming up on today.